Hello there everyone, I'm UXW Bill. I'd like to thank you for tuning into this video. I'm going to start things out today with a question to all of you out in the viewing audience. How many of you out there have ever come across something in your life that you really, really wanted, but every time you tried to get one you found that some sort of an obstacle was placed in your way, or you came this close to having it, and someone beat you to it? Probably a more succinct way of putting that is to say, how many of you out there have ever had the occasion be looking for something that turned into a real holy grail. I know I've certainly had a few in my lifetime, and there's still one hanging out there. A Power Macintosh G3 blue and white model. That was definitely one. Tried to get my hands on one of those several times. There's also the matter of an EGA monitor, which I will probably never find. I had one prior to the basement flood of 2004, but I wasn't watching carefully enough, and right out the door it went. So the one computer that I have, with an EGA graphics card in it, unfortunately I have to set it to CGA mode. And I know I could probably dump it and go with a VGA card or something like that, but I really did want to have at least one functional EGA monitor set up in my entire herd of computers. There's another thing that's proven to be something of a holy grail, and today that particular search comes to an end because I finally found it. What is it, you ask? It's a box fan, but not just any box fan. It's a box fan on a stand. Let's take a closer look at it. This particular fan is branded as a breeze maker, and while I certainly don't know about you, I happen to think that is a great name for a high quality vintage electric fan such as this. Other than that, I can't say anything about the history of the company that used this name brand, how long they were in business, what if any other fan models they might have produced, or even trivial stuff like whose electric motors they typically used in their finished fans. I came across this a couple weeks ago at a series of town-wide garage sales. I stopped off at a building that's been empty for many years. It's soon to go up for sale, and I was just mainly curious about what was inside it after all of these years. I wasn't really intending to buy anything, and most of what they had up for sale didn't interest me. It was mainly late model kitchen appliances that I either already have or would never use, but they did have a couple of audio cassettes that I found interesting, and when I saw this sitting in the background, it didn't have a price tag on it. And silly me, I should have asked first and kept my mouth shut, because they would have sold it to me for two dollars. I ended up offering them five for it. Oh well, I still think I got an excellent deal just by virtue of the fact that I can finally say that yes, I own a box fan that has a stand on it. It's a little rough. It's definitely seen some action in its time. You take a look at some of the things that were done to this poor thing over the years. You know, some of it's just normal wear and tear. There's a little lip here. There's some rust there. There's some wear and scuffing on the paint. All that stuff comes with time. And then there's the truly inexplicable stuff. For example, the little metal wires that fit into the body of the fan and keep this grill firmly in place, they're still here and accounted for. They're in place tightly. So why did someone tie this wire to the front grill? I have no idea. Same thing if we look around the back. I really can't imagine for a moment that's the original lead dress or routing of those wires from the factory. And for some reason, someone stuck a bolt through this fan. I guess I'll call this the Franken fan. Fans don't typically have necks, but I guess that's as close as you can get. And again, I, I have no idea why they would have done this, because it looks like everything needed to hold the rear grill in place is still present and accounted for. I guess I'll just take it out sometime, maybe even during the course of this video, and see if anything bad happens. Speaking of bad things happening, I did plug this in after giving it a quick once-over to make sure that the cord was still some semblance of intact and safe to use. And I'm pleased to say that nothing bad did happen. It has some issues while it runs. The blade set's definitely hitting something, and I don't know what it is for certain. It also needs a really good cleaning, which it's going to get. I don't know about a full dress restoration. I think I'll go with just cleaning it up, undoing some of these ridiculous modifications that have taken place over the years, and making it safe to use for day-to-day -day operations. It's a two-speed motor. Low and high, that's all you get. Pretty basic on that front. Came with a five-year something. I don't know what, probably a warranty. 
I'm surprised and impressed that much of the sticker stuck around for as long as it did. I can only guess that this probably dates from sometime in the 1960s, maybe as recently as the early 1970s, but I'm thinking with the color scheme, probably more 1960s than 1970s. Despite the basic two-speed motor, it does have a nice thermostatic control, only the second box fan in my collection that does so. This can be utilized if you have your fan in the window on a really cool night, maybe a borderline winter night and you're just trying to get some fresh air in the house without cooling things down too much, or you want to exhaust air from the house but you don't want to make the house too cold, you can just set this thermostat to approximately the desired set point. I don't know if it was ever delineated using a border with degrees or if you just had to kind of guesstimate where you wanted it, kind of a guess and check approach. It's hard for me to say. I almost want to say that there looks like there might have been an outline of a sticker there at some point, but of course it's been lost to the sands of time. Over here they went with a simple embossed mark in the metal to indicate what speed it's running at. And speaking of running, it's all plugged in and ready to go. Let's give it a run up and just see what it does. I will say it has an interesting startup sound unlike any that I've ever heard before. So we'll turn the thermostat all the way up here. I don't know if it would run constantly at that setting, but I assume it probably would. And we'll go around back so you can actually stand a better chance of hearing this because one of my most recent uploads I think gave you enough wind noise for the rest of your life in all probability. It does look like there's some kind of a label on the fan there. I might try to dust that off if I remove this bolt here in a moment and just see what goes wrong when I do. And here we go. That's the high speed. There you can hear the blade set hitting something. It's going to be a fun one to troubleshoot because I think it's happening when the blades deflect, the, when the blades flex under the centrifugal force exerted as they rotate. I have not been able through careful observe, observation, at least thus far, to catch what they're actually hitting. I suppose eventually when it cuts through something and escapes from, well, fan jail, that I'll probably end up finding out. So that was a run up and run down on the high speed. Let's try the low speed now. It's nice and quiet. And while it does shake a little bit on the stand in operation, it seems to be pretty well balanced. Which for as old as it is and as much action as it seems to have seen, I'm really pleasantly surprised by that. It's gradually picking up speed. You ever get the feeling you're being watched? I certainly do. That's the closest that cat has ever come to me. Alright, so there's our spin down. We'll do that one more time without any digressions about cats. Well, at least turning on the fan helps with the bugs. It's rained so much here recently that the mosquitoes in particular are just absolutely insane. And the hydroponic growing efforts are really doing well here at the Walsh Motors Science Laboratory. Here's the spin down on low speed. I think you'll agree, the motor bearings are certainly aged, probably could use some lubrication, but they are still most definitely in the game. 
And I know I say this in most, if not all, of my fan-related videos, but it's the honest-to-goodness truth. It never ceases to amaze me how these 40, 50, 60, 70, and more-year-old electric motors, many of which spent decades without so much as a drop of oil, still run beautifully or can be made to run beautifully, while the ostensibly permanently lubricated motor in the modern fan lasts for about six months to a year, starts to sound like it's mixing concrete, and then it burns out the lovely blue thermal safety fuse in the plug. Yeah, what a joke. Let's try the high speed now. This sound a little rough when it starts on high speed. And there you have it, folks, the Breeze Maker electric box fan on a stand. Yes, I am way more excited about this than I should be. But as always, I want to thank you for watching the video. I certainly hope that you enjoyed it, and I'm always interested in hearing your constructive commentary. Yeah, I got nothing about any of this stuff. I removed it, and everything still seems to be just fine.